Welcome to the Better Human Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Stuckert. Five minutes-ish a day to help you become a better human. One big idea to think better, live better, act better. It's about the journey, not the destination. That's what we're all about here at the Better Human Podcast. Get all the updates over at Colin.coach and the Better Human Newsletter. Today's title slash idea slash topic is how I buy real estate with Bitcoin without selling my Bitcoin. Yes, it's about money. It's about finance. And whether you're going to buy real estate or anything, like my mom's going to buy a new car. She needs a new used car. So instead of going to the credit union, we've actually used a Bitcoin-based loan, buy that used car, and then bam, comes our own bank. Banks love collateralized loans. Let's first talk about that real quick. What is that? That means that you pledge an asset, and then if you don't pay the debt service to the bank, your obligation, they will take that asset, sell it, and then that will make them whole. This reduces risks for them tremendously. Imagine going to a bank and saying, oh, I want a personal loan. That is then based on credit, and there's almost little recourse for banks to actually get that money from you if you don't pay it back. Whereas if you get a home or a mortgage, you then make your mortgage payments. And if you don't, the bank can repossess, foreclose on that property, and then auction that off to get their money back. This has been going on in the big industry. Real estate's probably the number one asset, but you also have businesses and sometimes machinery and things like that. But that's banks don't like that as much because it's hard to obviously sell that, right? Whereas real estate is pretty established that you can always sell real estate, especially if it's a high value or income producing, et cetera. Banks are going to wake up to the reality that something like Bitcoin, that they can actually hold for you and take from you if you don't pay your loan, they're going to wake up to how powerful this actually is. It's basically uh, a collateralized loan on steroids. It's better than real estate in every way. Real estate, if you foreclose on that property, you have to take it to auction. You have to sell it. You have to do all the, I mean, like there's so much paperwork and you have to, so much labor involved and there's such a long timeline that there's a lot of deals that banks just write out because it's not even worth the effort. So they might recoup like a fraction of the loan that they gave out originally. And that just sucks, right? Because they gave you, let's say $200,000. Maybe they collect $100,000 through the foreclosure process. And then, cause there's all these fees and other things going on. That just sucks, right? Bitcoin, on the other hand, is something that can be held in a digital wallet so the bank can actually hold it for you. And if you fail on your obligation to pay them back, they can then seize that Bitcoin immediately, like no foreclosure process, no sending people on the ground to like get people out of the property and all this, all this jurisdictional BS that comes with real estate. Bitcoin happens instantaneously. You don't need people. It can actually even be done just with computers or a click of a button or automatically, algorithmically. So if a bank says, oh, you have Bitcoin, let's say you have $100,000 in Bitcoin, we'll give you a loan, let's say 50% LTV, meaning loan to value. I'll give you $50,000 at an 8% interest rate. We lock up your 100,000 in Bitcoin. It stays in a digital wallet. We're not gonna use it or anything. And then you pay us the loan and interest payments. For a bank, this is as close to a risk-free loan as you're gonna get. Because if you default on the 50% of that, you actually forfeit all of the Bitcoin that they have, and then they can seize that Bitcoin and very easily sell it on the market to get their money back and actually even more than what they actually lent you. Now, the, the risk with Bitcoin is it's very volatile. So you might have $100,000 one day, and then it comes down to like 70,000 and then your LTV changes. So there are risk things you have to figure out. And as the Bitcoin market becomes more mature, the volatility will decrease and banks will become more and more pro Bitcoin loans. There's already crypto banks that are doing this. I can, I can go right now and get a loan out against my crypto up to almost 80% of the value at a very competitive interest rate. You just can't find that in the banking industry. And there's no credit checks. There's like a few clicks on an app generally. I don't have to talk to somebody. I don't have, to have this long drawn out process that you have to go through the banking industry. It is so amazingly powerful. And when you engage in this kind of banking commerce and you see how powerful it is, you start, your brain is just like, oh my gosh. Like you're like, this is the future. This is amazing. My head's going to explode. I can't believe it. It's amazing. You can literally become your own bank using your own assets. It's fascinating. So I did this to buy a property in Georgia. Real quick, we're running out of time. This requires a lot more research and there's a lot of different apps and there's a lot of different interest rates. And there's all the different things. So this is just an intro to this idea. Okay. It was a $200,000 property in Georgia. We're going to Airbnb it. It's their vacation rental. I split it with a partner, a good friend of mine. We went 50-50 on the down payment. We had to put a $60,000 down payment meaning 30,000 from me, 30,000 from him. So I had $30,000 in cash that I could have just dropped into that property, but I didn't want to do that. Why? Because it's better to own $30,000 in Bitcoin that's going to appreciate and then take a loan out against that, use that loan in that basically cheap money, the cheap 5 to 7% interest rate on that, use that to pay down 
the, uh, not pay down, but to pay the down payment. And then my Bitcoin is backing that note. So as long as I keep making my payments against the 30,000, my Bitcoin isn't at risk. And then over time, I will pay down that note on that 30,000. My Bitcoin will be released. And in the meantime, though, this is the where the power comes in. In the meantime, that $30,000 of Bitcoin will appreciate in value. Bitcoin's been growing at 200% a year on average. Let's say even at a conservative, conservative, ultra conservative rate, let's say Bitcoin only goes like 20% a year for the next couple of years. Well, my interest rate is 7%, let's say, but my Bitcoin is earning 20, 25% a year. So do you see how it makes so much more sense to own the Bitcoin, have it appreciate, and then get cheap money from a crypto bank to use to buy a cash flowing asset? And then here's where the magic really happens. We're already cash flowing this property. It's generating $2,000 to $2,400 a month. That covers all of our expenses. It covers our traditional mortgage, which is about 75% of the property we have a mortgage on. Then it covers my payments and my interest on the loan against my Bitcoin. And then there's some money left over. I'm telling you, this is how the rich get richer. I've always been into real estate, but I've just, I've been investing in my businesses and I never had the time and money and worth all to kind of get into it. It's amazing for a reason. And more wealth has been created out of real estate than anything in the history of humanity for a reason. Every single person can own one investment property. And then eventually over time, you just very, you have, it's slow, it takes time, but you can strategically leverage and take out home equity lines, cash flow these properties and then buy other properties and then other properties and you get appreciation. It's an amazing economic machine that is basically a path to financial freedom for every human on the planet. I think everybody, every single adult should own at least one investment property. It's just like, just to have it. You have a vacation place for you. You have a roof over your head if worse comes, worse comes to worse. But the key is, this is not the home you live in. It has to be a cash flowing investment. I won't get into that today because I don't have enough time. That's really all I have. I'm going to do more videos on this, more series on this. So let me know if there's specific questions or things related to this you want me to cover. I also have the Better Sovereign Show, which is more about money and finance and freedom, which you can get over at Colin Coach. Again, the newsletter, Colin.coach. And real quick, we got to thank our sponsors for the show. Let's pick out one here. What do we got? So because we're talking about Bitcoin, let's go with Swan Bitcoin. This is how I stack Bitcoin on a daily basis. You have a literal daily buy option. It then takes some money out of your bank account, I think twice a month or once a month. It's some of the lowest fees for buying Bitcoin that you can find. And I don't have to worry about the price. It just set it and forget it. It buys in the lows, it buys in the highs. And over the long run, it averages in, which is called dollar cost averaging. It's the best way to buy pretty much any asset, especially a volatile asset. You're not going to time the market. You're not going to know when it's like a good time to buy. It's too low, too high or whatever right? So instead of spending a bunch of time obsessing about that, buy daily, set it and forget it. Swanbitcoin.com slash Colin Stuckard or Colin.coach slash Swan. And that will help support the show. It will also be the greatest financial decision you've ever made to buy Bitcoin on a daily basis. As we move into this uncertain, but definitely inflationary future, you're going to want to have Bitcoin as an inflation hedge. And again, don't have time to get into that today. Just follow along and I'll cover it. And over time, you will learn about this and hopefully you will go from a pre-coiner, if you are one, to a Bitcoiner, which is inevitable for the human species. Everybody eventually will be there. It just matters. The question is just when you will come. Will you come when the rest of humanity comes and the prices are 100 to 1,000 X more than they are today? Or will you come early and get the massive upside that early adopters always get? And again, Bitcoin is about changing the world and bring sovereignty, freedom of speech, and how you use your money. It is censorship-proof money. The first humanity has ever invented. And it's going to change the world. It already is changing the world. The only question is, are you going to come in later or sooner? That's it for today's show. Call on the newsletter. I'll see you in the next one.